Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I'm truly glad that you have decided to join us today for worship. As we continue to worship virtually, it is important that you connect with us and that we connect with you in ways that are enriching your faith and your journey towards Bethlehem as we celebrate the coming of the Christ child. I invite you to continue to visit our website at wsmethodist.org to find out about our Sunday school options, our, our studies for Advent, and also the ways in which you can be a part of the ministry of our church as we continue to reach out to our community. There are several things I want to share with you that we are currently involved in. One is our Christmas with Epworth. Each year we select about 156 gifts for our congregation and our community to provide for the Epworth children, Children's Home family. We invite you to be a part of that by simply going to our website and clicking on the list and following the links until you find the gifts that you would like to donate. You can ship them directly to Epworth. You can drop them off at Epworth. Or if you prefer for them to be delivered by someone at the church, you can leave them here in the church office and they will be delivered. We do ask that you try to provide them sometime between December 7th and December 11th so that we can get them to the Epworth staff in time to wrap them for Christmas. Thank you for considering sharing your Christmas joy this year with the children at Epworth. Also, we are in partnership with Alcor Middle School throughout the school year, and they are now ready to receive donations for their Backpack Buddies program. In our connection and online, you will find a list of the things that are needed for those backpacks food supplies for our children to take home with them over the weekend and at night when they go home. We ask you to try to bring those either to our outdoor services or to put them just inside the back doors at the parking lot where a box has been provided for that purpose. We continue to reach out to the Alcorn Middle School as a part of our ongoing mission work in our community. I also want to remind you of a project we do every year for Heifer Project International. We select countries and families around the world to supply with gifts of animals so that they can grow and raise produce and farm, and farm animals in their own farms in their own countries. We donate bees, rabbits, pigs, goats, lambs, and cows, lots of wonderful things for these families. So you can donate online, you can donate at our outdoor services, and if you would love for, to participate in this, I would hope you would participate in a generous way to support these families around the world. We are always trying to connect our congregation in mission with people both here in our home community and with people in other places, because we believe this is the call of God on our lives, to live in love with our neighbors here and around the world. During this pandemic, we continue to worship virtually each week, but we also are doing outdoor worship experiences for those who are feeling comfortable enough to participate in such an event. We do require you to wear masks and we require you to sign in or to pre-register for each service. So we'll have a record of your attendance. We'll have our next service this afternoon, December the 6th at four o'clock. We'll meet again then on December the 20th at four o'clock for a carol sing. At that particular event, we will have a coffee truck that will supply us with coffee, hot chocolate and snacks that will be available to you. So come prepared to enjoy our worship time together with a little bit of fellowship snacks. Also on Christmas Eve, we are planning a virtual service to be released at six o'clock and a 12 o'clock and a four o'clock outdoor service. I hope that one of these services will provide you and your family an opportunity to worship with the Washington Street family on Christmas Eve. And now let us worship the Lord. 
Today, the second Sunday in Advent, we'll be reading from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 5. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Today, we relight the candle of hope and expectation. Let this candle remind us of the great hope we have in Christ, the Messiah, and in God's promises. As we light the candle of preparation and peace, let it remind us to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. And now, if you would join me in today's opening prayer, let us pray. God of Advent, of waiting and hoping, keep our hearts expectant, ready for your coming among us. God of Christmas, of celebration and rejoicing, make our hearts glad with the joy nothing can take from us. God of epiphany, of hiding and making known, fill our hearts with wonder at the revelation of your glory that we have seen in Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Creator God, you spoke the universe into being and then added sun, moon, and stars. You created the earth and the seas and populated them with fish, animals, and people and said that it was all good. Lord, you love us because we are created in your image. Help us to see the divine in everyone we encounter so that we might love them like you do, not based on who they are or what they do, but because they are a beloved child of God who has infinite worth. Help us to focus on you, Lord, during this season of Advent and be ever more aware of your presence and work in this world. Continue to strengthen and comfort those who are facing illness, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, who are worried about financial hardships and difficulties, who are unsure of their job, and those who are separated and isolated from their families, even during this holiday season because of the pandemic. Lord, comfort each and every one of us. Help us through this time and let us know that you are always with us and will never leave us or forsake us. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught his early disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Today I'd like for you to listen for the epistle lesson from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. 
Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. From the moment a woman discovers that she is carrying a child, or the time that a family learns that they will be able to adopt a child, a journey of promise begins. Sometimes people talk about how expectant mothers will nest, but I'm speaking of something much more than just surrounding oneself with what is comfortable. I'm thinking about how they really begin a journey of preparation. It's about doctor's visits, sonograms, conversations with friends and neighbors. It's about name selection. It's about blood tests. It's about new clothes. It's about children's needs. It's about preparing not just your body and your mind emotionally. It's also about preparing an entire family for the coming of a promised child. It is a time of expectation and hope, of dreaming and planning, of making ready, of preparing for joy. As we hear the Advent promise of Isaiah, one that is so readily quoted from the lips of John the Baptist and sung in the Messiah, it is not a call to prepare for the long-awaited Messiah or for the return to Jerusalem or to the temple of God. Surprisingly, we're invited to prepare the wilderness and the desert. Wilderness? Desert? Not many of us have a realistic understanding of either. Our understanding is mostly educational, perhaps even cinematic. We might have studied about the wilderness or the desert in our educational endeavors, where we learned about the dangers of animals and poisonous snakes, where we might have accessed information that people who have gone before us never had access to, like where you find water in the desert or how you determine how much water you need to make a specific journey for a length of time. How to determine, for instance, where what plants you can eat and what snakes might be poisonous and what to do if you're bitten by a snake. Wilderness. Desert. Hmm. That doesn't sound like Advent to me. It doesn't make me want to hum walking in a winter wonderland or I'll be home for Christmas or silent night or joy to the world. But the wilderness and the desert that Isaiah referenced was not a literal place, but an allusion to the gaping distance between God and God's people. Evil had done its work. The people had rebelled against God, and they had refused to heed the words of the prophet as he bade them to seek justice and to put their faith in the Lord. And the destruction that was prophesied in the 39th chapter of Isaiah 
came to pass. The city of Jerusalem was demolished. The temple of the Lord was destroyed. And the people, most of them anyway, were forced to march to the drumbeat of their rebellion into exile in Babylon. There they languished for 70 years. And then, from the shadows of their dark night of the soul, Isaiah spoke to them of a new vision. Isaiah spoke to them as if they had overheard God addressing God's holy counsel. It was a vision not of judgment, but of consolation and comfort. A vision that invited them and invites us to hope even when we find ourselves in the wilderness of sin or the desert of spiritual distance. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The prophet announces forgiveness and mercy are extended to you from the heavenly council. The word of the Lord is new. It's comfort. It's tenderness. And then from that council came a word to prepare a way for the coming of God. Preparing for the promise of God with us. No longer separated by sin, no longer distant or withdrawn, but God with us. In verse 9, Isaiah declares, Here is your God. Now that sounds like Advent. Emmanuel. God with us. This is a season when we remember the promise of one who was heralded by angels, welcomed by shepherds, born in a stable, a baby sleeping on hay. That sounds like Advent. The promise of one who came and dwelled among us one who taught us the way of love, whose life, death, and resurrection was for us, the one who promised to be with us to the end of the age and to come again to establish the reign of God among us. So here we are in 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, yearning in ways we could never anticipate for God's comfort, waiting for the coming of the Lord. Peter helps us to understand that our waiting is not because we have been judged and punished by God or that God is distant or unhappy with us, but that God is patiently waiting for the repentance of the world, for the repentance of all people. God is waiting so that we who believe can prepare ourselves and the world for the promise of God, for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home, the reign of God. Preparing for the promise. Such work encompasses the witness of both the prophet and the apostle. Isaiah cried out, in the wilderness prepare a way 
of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Peter wrote, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting and hastening the coming of the day of God? Preparing for promise means examining our lives with the vigilance of a Lenten discipline so that we can identify any distance between ourselves and our God and make a way for God to enter into our lives. It means for us to strive for holiness and godliness in active ways, actively weeding out any undergrowth of evil within us and to purify any stagnant water that might reside in us that might poison our lives. Preparing for the coming promise is more than just attending worship or offering a prayer of confession. It is to move from the outward signs of repentance, which all of these are, to a deeper inward self-examination. Just breathe deeply for a moment and imagine what that might mean for you. Preparing for the promise means that we are to be watchful in the world. Where do we observe the, cha the chasms between what God dreams for the world and for that which exists among us. God dreams of justice and righteousness in ways that mean we are all on a level path. No one is higher or lower. There are no crooked mountain passes by which we cannot see. There are no places where we attain heights that cause us to be dizzy and lose our footing or fall. We're on level ground as we stand before the Lord. All the distinctions of this secular world fall away, and we are distinguished only, only by our labor for holiness, justice, and peace and by our love for God and our love for one another. As we prepare for the promise, the words of the Gospel of John will be made real. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And love will build bridges of justice and hope for all people. We often talk about Advent as a time of reflection. But Advent is not a passive time, any more than the typical 40 weeks of pregnancy. There is much to do to prepare. The challenge for us is not to be caught up in consumerism, but to be caught up in the promise of the God who is coming to us. The challenge is not for us to prepare our homes for Christmas, but to prepare our spiritual house so that we are ready to receive the Lord. The challenge is not to turn away from the world, but to engage the world to prepare the deserts and the wilderness for the one who is coming to dwell among us and to bring into existence a new heaven and a new earth. The challenge is to prepare for the promise. Now that sounds like Advent to me. Glory to God. And on earth, peace. Let us pray. 
Holy One, you are always with us, yet always coming to us. Teach us how to prepare for the promise of your advent. Enable us to hear anew the voices of the prophets and the apostles, to discover once again the simple wonder of the shepherds, the intelligent courage of the Magi, and the patient faith of Mary and Joseph. May our lives bear witness to the good news of a child born for us. Now, in the quiet of our hearts, we ask you to make us ready for his coming. And forever we give you honor, praise, and glory. Amen. And now I invite you to leave this time of worship carrying within you the hope for the promise that comes from God alone, the coming of one who will dwell among us and establish among us a reign of justice and peace, a reign of joy. Amen and amen. <laughs>